Good morning. Namaste to each of you. And thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's take a few moments to become present. Find a nice, comfortable seated position where you can sit with your spine and the back of your neck is nice and tall and long. Opening up your chest, opening up your diaphragm and opening up your heart. Gently close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes. Soften your shoulders. Soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is. Soft and gentle. Breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You may open your eyes now. For this morning's intention, you may think of a positive word or a phrase to have with you on your mat, or perhaps carry with you throughout the day. This morning's intention I'd like to talk about is the sixth, sixth limb of yoga, which is dharana. And that is, uh, translates to focused concentration. It's like wondering why everything's so blurry. Because I'm not, I have my glasses on. Um, so the first four limbs of the eight limbs of yoga, um, our focus is on our external world, guidelines for living, how we have uh, mobility through our poses, and how breath nourishes us. The pratyahara, the fifth limb, is the bridge we cross from the external world towards the internal world by withdrawing our senses and allowing them to fade into the background. Dharana, the sixth limb, which we'll be doing today, starts the journey inward by developing a focused mind. It's kind of like training a puppy to sit and stay. So there are several concentration techniques that we can use to help us create a focused mind. First one is called Anapanasati, and that's breath awareness. And it's breath awareness on the raw sensations of your body. You go inward and you just feel how that breath flows throughout your body. And it's the easiest method to um, help create that focused mind because it's always with us. I mean, we can employ that anywhere we are at any time. The second one is Trataka, Trataka, there we go, <laughs> Trataka, and that means gaze in Sanskrit, um, and it's based on the theory of still eyes equals a still mind. So by guiding our eyes to rest on a specific point, we build concentration and eliminate distractions. It's part of that letting other senses fall into the background. We're focused on one thing. So typically people focus on a candle or a flower. Um, a lot of people have kind of a yoga room or studio set up or meditation room um, set up where they have maybe a candle or a flower or a statue or a picture, something that they focus on. I actually, when I do meditate, <laughs> I um, 
go into the living room and look out the window and there's a nice um, pastoral scene out the, that window. So that's kind of my focus, um, my trataka, if you will. And then the last one is called drishti. And that's what we hear a lot when we take a yoga class and doing our asana um, poses. Um, so the drishti, it means where we place our gaze outwardly influences our physical body, both posture and alignment. So that helps us with our physical poses. And there's some poses that we'll do today that will employ both well, they'll employ the drishti in all of them, but I will employ both the drishti and the trataka. So there are nine drishti points, and we'll get to those when we start our asana practice. So for our meditation this morning, um, I'm going to set up a candle, and you can use that as your trataka um, or anything else. Maybe you're in the room that you would typically meditate in, you have something that, that um, works for you. So you can focus on that. Or you can use the um, Anapanasati where you say, close your eyes and just focus on how the breath flows through your body, the raw sensations of that breath going in and out of your body. And if you'd like to uh, have a mudra, there's a classic mudra, the one where you're, um, taking your index finger and your thumb together and you have your other three fingers extended and you just take that and place it on your lap or on your knees. And that's called Gyan. And that, um, that's a mudra specifically for concentration. So that's why it's classic that you see that in um, when people are meditating. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna set up the candle and we'll just take a few minutes to um, do a meditation and then we'll start our asana practice. Great, let us begin our asana practice.
And you can continue sitting in your comfortable seated position for a little bit. Um, try to lower your, your knees to the crease of your, your hips right here. Um, spine and back of your neck is nice and tall. As I mentioned, there are nine dristi points. Um, first one is to look straight ahead. And part of that is also to look up. I'm not sure why both of these are considered one point, but they are. So you're looking straight ahead or you're looking up maybe to the tops of treetops. The second one is to look, send your gaze either left or right. The third one is to focus on your third eye, and that's right between your brows, eyebrows. The fourth one is the tip of your nose. That we're gonna try to do a few times. And then your hands is another one. The fingertips, yet another one. The middle of your thumb, when you come into Anjali Mudra, you, uh, if you look down, you can look to the middle of your thumb. Your navel is a drishti point. And your feet are a drishti point. So let's start our asana practice in our basic seated pose. You can either have your legs crossed in front of you or side by side, whatever is most comfortable for you. Now we're going to, um, with our breath, um, we're going to um, do some head nods and turns and circles. So we're going to inhale, lifting our gaze up. That's a dristy point. And then exhale, sending our gaze down. And if you can, try to look at your navel. So a nice long stretch in the back of the neck. Feels good. Inhale, lifting your eyes up either straight ahead or you can continue upward to the top of the trees and exhale down to gaze at your feet or your navel. Inhale, come back up again. Eyes are straight ahead or send them up to the tops of the trees. And then exhale, come back down. Gaze at your feet or your navel. And then come back up to a neutral position. Then we'll take our gaze and we'll send it to the left. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, send it over to the right. Inhale, come back to center. Turn it to the left. Inhale back to center, exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. And then with the tip of our nose, one of our dristi points, we're gonna draw a circle. So you can focus on your nose and try to have your nose create this nice round circle. And then you can reverse the direction counterclockwise. Find if you're focused on your tip of your nose, then your circle's a little bit more circular as opposed to kind of rectangular or jagged. <laughs> and then bring your head back to a neutral center. We'll take our um, hands and place them on the mat by our side and do some sun breaths. So inhale, lifting your hands up and you can send your gaze forward or up to your hands to the middle of your thumbs and then exhale, bring your hands down, sending your gaze down to your feet keeping it straight ahead. So inhale, lifting up. Again, your option, keep your head straight or send your gaze up to your thumbs. Exhale, bring the hands down, keep your head straight or you could set your head down. We'll do that a few more times. Your choice of drishti.
And one more time. And then with our right fingertips on the mat, we're gonna send our left arm up alongside of our head. And we're going to bend our right elbow down toward the mat. And if you keep your gaze forward, just deep forward, or send it down to look at your right hand on the mat. And when you turn your head, do it very slowly and gently. And inhale, come back up. Send your left fingertips down to the mat. Right arm goes up along your ear, bending your elbow, left elbow down toward the mat. Your gaze can be forward, or you can bring it down to your hand. And see how that does change your posture and your alignment just ever so slightly. Inhale, come back up. We'll do that one more time on each side. Left arm goes up along the ear, right fingertips around the mat and right elbow drops down toward the mat. Inhale, come back up. Left fingertips down, right arm goes up. Left elbow goes down toward the mat. Inhale, come back up again. So we're going to um, come up onto our hands and knees to tabletop. So with tabletop, we're going to look down at our fingertips, see that they're spread wide apart, index finger pointing up toward the top of the mat. Wrists are right below our shoulders. Knees are right below our hips. Navels tucked to the spine. And we're going to go into cat cow. So uh, make sure your weight's evenly distributed in your hands, pushing down in your hands slightly to create that space between your shoulder and your ear. So going into cat, we're going to round our back, exhaling. And if you can, take a peek at your navel for the drifty. Or if you can send your gaze between your legs down to your feet. And then inhale, lifting up, send your gaze straight ahead. Tailbone goes up. Tummy kind of sags down. Exhale, back to cat. So we're rounding our back, dropping our head tailbone down, sending our gaze to our navel or to our feet. Inhale. Lifting our head back up, sending our gaze straight ahead, arching our back slightly. You can see how your head and where you send your gaze kind of informs the rest of your body, your alignment. Rounding our back to the cat. Inhale, lifting our head up. Sending our gaze forward. And do that a few more times at your own pace. And then come back to tabletop. We bring both knees together, have equal uh, distribution of weight in both hands. Then we're going to send our right leg up to hip height and try to keep your hip bones parallel to the mat. Our toes pointed. And then we lift our left arm up to shoulder height. 
fingertips pointed to the top of the mat. Our gaze is straight down, so we create a nice long spine, the back of our neck. And then we're gonna point our toes on the inhale, exhale, flexing our toes down toward the mat. Inhale, point, exhale, flex. 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 Inhale, point, exhale, flex, and bring both hand and knee down. And we'll do that on the other side. And just check in with your hands, make sure your weight's evenly distributed. Lift your left leg up to hip height. <clears throat> pointing your toes, and then lift your right arm up, shoulder height, pointing your fingertips forward. The toes are pointed for inhale, flex for exhale, inhale, point, exhale, flex, <clears throat> inhale, point, exhale, flex, inhale, point, exhale, flex, inhale, point, exhale, flex, Inhale, point, exhale, flex. Inhale, point, and exhale, flex, and bring everything back down. We'll walk or tuck our toes under and walk our hands back. Come up to on our balls of our feet. And then we're gonna push down and lift up to mountain. And go through our mountain pose which is also the essentials of good posture. So our big toe is pointed to the straight edge of the mat. We're gonna lift our toes up off the mat, spread them apart as much as you can, bring the toes back down, lift your heels up off the mat, and then bring our heels back down. Just feel that grounded, grounding sensation connecting to the earth. Our legs are nice and straight and strong. Knees are somewhat um, bent, create a little bit of, of mobility in our knees, not stiff and straight. Navels tucked to our spine. Spine is nice and straight and long. Shoulders are relaxed and gently rolled back. Chin is tucked ever so slightly toward our chest creating that nice long spine again with the back of the neck included. Crown of our head is reaching up to the sky. And then we're gonna sweep our hands up overhead, keeping our gaze forward. And then exhale, bending our knees, we're gonna bring our hands all the way down to the mat. So at this point, at this point you could do that on a, Anapanasati, where you're kind of focused on your breath. We do this each week. And I just say, check in with your body. See if you can find any spots that might feel a little tense and send that nourishing breath to those spots. Try to relax them. So you're, you're inhaling and exhaling, feeling the raw sensations of your body. The Anapanasati. And on the next inhale, lift your hands to your shins, flatten out your back, send your gaze straight down for a half forward fold. And then send the crown of your head down toward the ground, looking up toward your navel, a forward fold. And then sweeping your hands from the mat all the way up overhead. And you bring your eyes up to your hands, to the middle of your thumbs. And then we're gonna send our, our, our hands up toward the sky, lifting up on our tippy toes for palm tree. So this is a balanced pose and we're just going to sway here. And this is where you can bring in the trataka. 
the focal point, that gaze, like what we were doing with a candle. So you, you find a spot in your room that's stationary. So I have a window here and the branches are blowing outside. That's not a good one. I want something that just stays still to focus on. We're going to bring our heels back down to the mat, send our hands back down, bending our knees on the way down, protect our lower back. And then inhale, lift our hands up to our shins again, flattening out our back, sending our gaze down. And then send the crown of our head down toward the ground, looking up at our navel. And sweep our hands from the floor all the way up again. Again, you can bring your eyes up to the middle of your thumb if you choose, or you keep them straight forward, whichever is most comfortable for you. And then we're going to bring our arms down so that our arms are at shoulder height. We're going to do what I call the 180s that I uh, learned at the International Day of Yoga. So we're going to uh, focus on our fingertips. We're going to do a semicircle with our fingertips, starting with our right hand. We're going to big, make a big semicircle, bring it around all the way around to the back of us. And as we do, we're going to bring our left fingertips to sit on our right shoulder. So we're following our right fingertips at this point with our eyes. And then we'll send that semicircle back to the front, bringing both hands back together side by side. And then we'll do that on the left side. So keep your focus on your left fingertips. That would be the dristi here. And then bringing your right hand to your left shoulder. And you feel that nice twist in your lower torso. And then come back to the center. We'll do that again on each side. Follow your right fingertips in that semicircle all the way to the back. Bringing your left fingers onto your right shoulder. And then bring them back to center. And we'll do that on the left side. And bring your hands back to center. We'll bring our hands up toward the sky. And then exhale as we bring them back down to the mat. Bending our knees. And then bringing our hands up to our shins, flattening out our back, sending our gaze down. Then sending the crown of our head down for forward fold. And then sweeping our hands all the way up overhead again. Sending your gaze up to your thumbs if you choose. And then palms come together and palms come to heart center. We're gonna have our feet about hip width apart, maybe just a little bit closer. And we're gonna raise our right leg, keeping our left foot nice and grounded in the mat. And just again, if you need to find a taka, that still point to focus on so you feel stable. And then we're going to send our right leg, not putting it back on the map, but send it in back of you. And then plant it down in back of you like you're coming into warrior one. So your foot's flat on the mat or on the floor, and your foot is angled at a 45 degree, your front knee's bent. And then we'll come back to mountain pose. Again, bring your feet a little distance apart. And we'll do that on the other side. 
So we're gonna really root our right foot into the mat, lifting our left leg up. Find the stability in the pose. And then slowly with control, we're gonna send that left foot in back of us and plant it on the mat or on the floor. Our foot fully comes down to the mat or floor. And then come back to mountain. And then we're gonna sweep our hands up. Again, big inhale, big exhale, bringing the hands down to the floor, bending our knees generously. Inhale, lifting the hands up to our shins, flat back, half forward fold, and then setting the crown of our head down toward the ground. And sweep our hands from the floor all the way up overhead. Palms come together. Palms come to heart center. You can be looking at your fingertips or in the middle of your thumb. And then palms come to the back of your hips. We'll go into the supported back bend. So have your feet hip width apart. Fingertips placed on the back of your hips. Fingertips are pointing down. Shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Chin is tucked to your chest. And then just let your shoulders drop back, keeping your gaze forward. So this is one of those that um, the drishti of keeping your gaze forward really um, is important. There's a lot of photos I've seen where they have their head um, lifting up toward the sky, which is another drishti point, but um, that's a conversation for another time. This one, we keep our, our focus forward. And then inhale, coming back up. How's everyone doing? Okay. So sweeping our hands up overhead and then exhale, bringing them down. Both come down to the mat. And we're gonna send our right leg back coming into runner's lunge. So our left knee is over our left ankle. Our right foot is in its own lane. We gaze back at our foot for Dristi, the heels pushing to the back of the mat. Then we plant our right hand down on the mat and sweep our left hand up and follow your left hand with your eyes as you sweep it all the way up and overhead. Runner's lunge with a twist. Make sure your back leg is nice and straight and strong, the heels pushing to the back of the mat. And sweep your left hand down. And bring our left, our left foot to join the right foot coming into plank. Our shoulders are right above our wrists. Our gaze is down, looking at our fingers, which are nice and spread apart. Heels are pushing to the back of the mat. And we're gonna keep our elbows tucked to the side and either lower to the mat using knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, just slowly come down. And a push up. And our shoulders are still over our hands. We're gonna lift our chin, lift our chest up. Then gently push with our hands coming up into cobra. Our gaze is set forward. Elbows are tucked to the side. And then come up to tabletop and lower down our hips toward our ankles coming into child's pose. Our hands are extended out in front of us and our third eye, our forehead, comes down and rests on the mat. And 
inhale, coming back up to tabletop. We're gonna tuck our toes underneath and lift our hips up to the sky, coming into downward dog. So again, our hands, our fingertips are spread wide apart. Index finger pointing to the top of the mat. Arms are nice and straight. Chest is reaching toward our thighs. Your knees are bent, or you can be pedaling, but keeping your knees bent. Walking your dog. And there's an interesting dristy point. Each pose is kind of assigned a dristy point to help with the alignment. And I find downward dog has an interesting dristy point. I'm tempted to have it as a quiz. So I think I will. So we'll talk about it later. What do you think the dristy point is here? And then slowly walk your feet up to your hands, coming into forward fold, and slowly sweep your hands all the way up, up to the sky. Send your gaze up to the middle of your thumb. Palms come together, palms come to heart center. We're gonna set up for a tree pose. So have your feet a little bit apart. And then we're gonna start with our left foot grounded into the mat and lift our right leg up. And for tree pose, once you've established your balance, or if you need to establish your balance by keeping your toe on the mat and your ankle, your heel, left, right heel on the left ankle, that's fine. Or if you like to have your tree pose where your foot is on the inner part of your shin and calf, you do that. Or you can bring it all the way up to your thigh. And your drifty is setting your gaze straight ahead and your trataka is finding a nice still spot within that gaze. And then keeping your leg lifted, as we did earlier, we're gonna send our foot all the way back, coming in to warrior two. So our left foot is um, on the mat and left knee is above the left ankle, right foot, the edge of the right foot's nice and snug at a 45 degree angle in the back of your mat. And you can just kind of scooch to get comfortable in this pose. Pushing down your feet, pushing out toward the ends of the mat so you can feel that energy in your legs. Your chest is open to the long side of the mat, lifting up your arms to shoulder height. We can turn our gaze to look at our fingertips. The Dristi. And then we're gonna send our right arm down to our right side, lifting our left hand up to the sky and following the fingertips with our gaze. We'll just have the hand straight up. And then from reverse warrior, where we are now, we're gonna take our left arm, place it on our left thigh, sweep our right hand up so that it is straight up, send our gaze up to our hand. And then send our right hand back down to the mat. 
Pivoting on our back foot, coming into runner's lunge. We're gonna push down into our left foot so we can lift our right leg up and bring our right foot side by side with the left foot. Coming into forward fold. And then sweeping our hands slowly all the way up overhead. Sending our gaze up to our thumbs. Hands come together, palms come together, palms come to heart center. And then we'll do this all on the other side. So inhale, sweeping our hands up. Big inhale, big exhale, bring our hands down to the mat. We're gonna send our, actually I'm gonna go down this way. Left foot back, coming into runner's lunge. So our right knee is right above our right ankle. Left foot, um, the heel is pushing to the back of the mat, energizing your legs. Left hand goes down onto the mat. Right hand sweeps from the mat all the way up. And we're gonna follow our hand with our eyes till it's straight up in the sky. And bring our hand back down. Planting both hands on the mat, we're gonna bring our right foot to meet with the left foot coming into plank pose. Shoulders are right above our wrists. Fingers are spread wide apart. Again, you can keep um, or lower to the mat using your knees, chest, chin method or chaturanga, keeping your elbows tucked to your side. And having your fingertips right below your shoulders. Now lift your chin and chest up and then gently push, come up into Cobra, sending your gaze straight ahead. And then come up to tabletop and lower your hips toward your ankles. Extending your arms out straight, coming into child's pose, bring your third eye down to the mat. And inhale, come back up. Tuck your toes under. Lift your hips up into downward dog and pedal out your feet here. Walk your dog. Hips are up to the sky. Arms nice and straight and strong. Chest reaching toward your thighs. Think about where that drifty is again. And then slowly walk your hands, your hands, your feet to your hands. <laughs> Coming into forward fold. And then sweeping your hands, we lift all the way up. Sending our gaze up to our fingertips, up to our middle of our thumb. Palms come together, palms come to heart center. And we'll do tree pose on this side. So we're gonna plant our right foot into the mat, lifting our left leg up. Sending your gaze straight ahead, find the Tritaka, that still, still spot. And then you can bring your toes to the mat, left heel to right ankle or left foot to the inner part of your right shin or to the inner part of your right thigh.
And then keeping your leg lifted, we're gonna send it all the way back of us and land it on the mat, coming into warrior two. So scoot yourself into a nice, comfortable warrior two. Right knee over your right ankle. So you can see your big toe, left foot at an angle, back edge of the foot, nice and snug into the mat pushing down our feet and pushing them toward the edges. So feel that warrior strength in your legs. Chest is open to the long side of the mat, lifting our arms up to our shoulders. We'll slowly turn our gaze, look at our right fingertips. And then lower our left hand down as we raise our right hand up to the sky, straight up above, following your fingertips with your gaze. And then bringing your right arm down to your right thigh. We'll sweep our left hand up, straight up, to the sky, sending our gaze up to our left hand. And then bring the left hand down to the mat, pivoting on our back foot, coming back into runner's lunge. And then we're gonna push down into our right foot, lifting our left foot up, and bringing it to meet our right foot. So we're in forward fold. And then sweep our hands all the way up from the mat, up above, palms come together, palms come to heart center. And then we're gonna bring our toes to the edge of our mat. Bring our, tuck our heels in toward the middle of the mat so our feet are at a 45 degree angle. Nice and straight back spine. We bring our hands together in Anjali Mudra, looking at our fingertips or the middle of our thumb. We're gonna keep our spine nice and straight and strong. And then bend our knees, lowering our hips to the mat, coming into wide legged. Um, squat, bringing our torso between our thighs, our elbows, rest gently against the inner knee. If you'd like to have a little bit more stretch, you can send your um, hands in the Anjali Mudra down toward the mat. And then we'll bring our sit bones down onto the mat. And we're gonna roll down on our back so you can do it one of three ways or maybe you have your own way that you like to do it. Um, you can have your knees bent, extend your hands and slowly lower down one vertebrae at a time. Or you can have your feet, I mean your legs always extended, straight, toes pointed and Extend your arms and lower down one vertebrae at a time. Or if you want, you can tuck your hands under your knees and roll back the express method. And once you're on your back, you bring your knees to your chest, give them a nice gentle hug and rock back and forth. Give your lower back a nice massage. And then we'll extend our legs down to the end of the mat. And in this part, we're gonna go from the Dristi to the Anapanasati um, concentration method, where we're gonna feel the raw sensations of our body. And something that a yogi by the name of Dave Swenson, I discovered, um, through him. 
So what we'll be doing, just as an overview, we're going to be focusing on a part of our body, really tensing it up, and then relaxing it. And this will be in a very controlled way. And then feeling, letting it relax and feeling the sensations through our body. So let's start, we're gonna be in a reclined mountain pose. So it's an active pose. We're not in Shavasana yet. Um, so our, our body's still energized and our feet are, uh, toes are pointing up toward the sky. Feet are flexed. And you can put your hands either alongside you with palms down to support or on your hips, wherever is comfortable to support. Um, you during this process. We will be getting to our hands, so uh, no, don't sit on them. <laughs> so we're gonna lift our right leg up, about a foot, um, your own foot's distance. So it's just lifted off the, off the mat and toes are pointing up to the sky. And then we're gonna curl our toes, curl us, uh, tighten our ankle, Tighten our calves, tighten our knee, and then tighten our thigh, and hold, and hold, and hold. And then we're going to release from our thigh, release from our knee, release from our calf, release from our foot, and unfurl your toes and slowly float that leg back down to the mat and relax and feel the sensation throughout your body. We'll do that with the other leg. So lift your left leg up, toes are flexed pointing to the sky. We curl our toes under, tighten, our ankle, tighten our calf, tighten our knee, tighten our thigh, and hold, and hold, and hold. Relax our thigh, relax the knee, relax the calf, unfurl the toes, and let our foot float back down to the mat. Feel the sensations in your body. So the next step, we're gonna concentrate on tightening our, our um, glutes or our buttocks and the um, lower part of our stomach. So really tighten that up and hold, and hold, and hold, and hold, and then relax. Next, we're going to concentrate on our arm. So lift your arm up like you did with your leg. We're going to curl our fingers one at a time into a fist slowly. And then once we get into a fist, we'll tighten that fist, tighten our wrist, tighten our lower arm, tighten the upper arm, tighten the shoulders, shoulder, and then hold. Hold, 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 and then relax from the shoulder, relax from the upper arm, relax from the lower arm, and then unfurl our fingers one at a time like a flower opening, and then float your hand back down to the mat, and relax. Feel the sensations, those raw sensations throughout your body.
And then with our left hand, we'll do that. Lift your left arm up. Um, curl, curl your fingers together or into a fist, one at a time. And then once they're in a fist, tighten that fist and then tighten your wrist, tighten your forearm, tighten your upper arm, tighten your shoulder and hold, 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 hold. We untighten your shoulder, loosen your upper arm, then your lower arm, then your wrist, and then unfurl your fingers like a flower opening slowly and beautifully and then float your hand back down to the mat. And relax. We'll make our way up to our face. I want you to scrunch up your face like you just had a taste of the most bitter thing in the world. So let's scrunch right now and hold and hold and hold and hold and hold and then open your eyes and widen your, your, your face like you just had the biggest surprise in the world and hold, and hold, and hold, and hold, and then relax your face and feel the sensation. So this was kind of a, an effort to see that while we, when we concentrate, we often think of it as a tense um, activity where we tighten up our whole body, we can actually concentrate on relaxing our body too and releasing and floating back down. So you can concentrate in either way, tense or relaxed, your choice. So we prepare for Shavasana, bringing your heels out to the corners of your mat, letting your feet flop open. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your stomach, and then open up your hands so the palms are facing up to the sky. Take a nice deep inhale. And on the exhale, just relax your body down into the mat. Like you're releasing down into a cloud. For today's poem, I have a poem titled, When the Year Grows Old, and it's by Edna St. Vincent Millay. I cannot but remember when the year grows old, October, November, how she disliked the cold. She used to watch the swallows go down across the sky and turn from the window with a little sharp sigh. And often when the brown leaves were brittle on the ground and the wind in the chimney made a melancholy sound, she had a look about her that I wish I could forget. The look of a sacred thing sitting in a net. Oh, beautiful at nightfall, 
the soft spitting snow and beautiful the bare bows rubbing to and fro. But the roaring of the fire and the warmth of fur and the boiling of the kettle were beautiful to her. I cannot but remember when the year grows old, October, November, how she disliked the cold.